We're back. It's the Trilosophy Podcast. Sports, music, film. Going into May. So, we'll be experimenting with a with a new segment. It'll it'll be called uh, like podcast on the go. It's, uh, people get busy from time to time, and you know sometimes you're not able to just sit down and and do a show. You just gotta. You got to put in your work wherever you can. You got to try and do that. All right? So that's first and foremost. So I'd like to do that. Uh, Try this out for a little while and see how that goes. Uh, If not, then I'm going to have to try a little bit harder for uh, the sit-down podcast. The the sit-down podcast, um, I'll try to strictly strictly reserve for, um, for interviews uh, special guests, things like that. So, um, yeah, cause I'd like to actually, you know, update, you know, uh, after a weekend of fights, uh, maybe review the upcoming fights, things like that. So let's get into it. Uh, last weekend, Cinco de Mayo weekend was a uh, huge, uh, boxing weekend in, Southern California at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. So, if you live there and you're a boxing fan, hopefully you went because uh, back to back, both events were at the StubHub Center, and gosh, that's just that's great if you live there. So, So Ryan Garcia versus versus Jason Velez on the Golden Boy ESPN card at the StubHub Center. Uh, that took place on Friday. Ryan Garcia, 19 years old, taking on a formidable opponent in Jason Velez. Uh, fight went the distance. And uh, was very interesting to me, uh, the Thursday before, on the Leave It In The Ring podcast with... Uh, David Duenas and Gabriel Montoya. They had they had a Golden Boy matchmaker Roberto Diaz on, and and he explained. Uh, he talked a little bit about um, Ryan Garcia's future, uh, how this fight can affect his immediate future. With uh, if he went the if he knocked out, or you know if if the fight went to stoppage and Ryan Garcia was able to do that against Jason Velez, then. They were thinking about giving him a title shot by the end of the year. I think that's kind of crazy for a 19-year-old kid that's still learning. And um, Roberto Diaz, uh, he ended up also mentioning that if the kid went the distance, then, you know, they'll take a, a step back. But he said, which I agree 100% Ryan Garcia will will gain the invaluable experience so that was that's uh so that's what that's what occurred Friday night and you know I think that was uh yeah exactly some great experience for him and 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 this I believe this is the first time he's gone the distance in his pro career so it's just hold the brakes. The kid is a, is a social media sensation. Do, does a bunch of these dance videos and this and that. Uh, I mean, it attract attracts a lot of young girls to his fights and his social media accounts. And yeah, I mean, they're following him on his social media accounts. And uh, so, you know, got some good experience. And, we'll, and he'll go forward in his career and. We'll see where it goes from here. Also, my boy, Spike O'Sullivan on the undercard versus uh, Berlin Abreu. 
ended up, uh, you know, uh, they, they had to stop the fight. Roger Romo in uh, Abreu's corner. Uh, he took the fight, I believe, uh, with a week's notice, maybe. Uh, I believe he went up two weight classes. Uh, Spike O'Sullivan, uh, I mean, you know, he just he, he mowed him down. And what was, what, what was great, I think, in Golden Boy's... What Golden Boy did was put Spike O'Sullivan, an Irish fighter that has a very uh, fan-friendly style. So, what I mean by that is, he, you know, he, he there's um, he goes forward. He, he's not boxing or dancing around, but he goes forward. He's very, very entertaining to watch. He's very aggressive. He's a pressure fighter. And, I mean, to do... To bring an Irish fighter that's that would usually be promoted on the East Coast, usually. I'm not sure if I've ever seen uh, a promoter bring an Irish fighter to SoCal or the West Coast or anything like that just because, uh, I don't know, he, I, I, they're, they're more marketable on the East Coast. So, bringing him, he wore his uh, uh, mariachi hat inside the ring, I mean, you know, walking in to the ring, um... I mean, people were cheering for him. He he gained a lot more fans, I believe, and uh, you know, gave a good fight. You know, I also believe Spike really enjoyed himself in LA. I mean, he's uh, he has his presence on social media and his Instagram and all that. Um, you know, we'll we'll see where he goes from here. Um, I think he's he's a a pretty good middleweight fighter, uh, maybe a couple notches below Canelo and Triple G, um, but, I mean, he's up there, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see the guy fight, the guy's, at, he's, he's an aggressive fighter, and i like to see that, I mean, you know, he's coming off, uh, some, uh, he's coming off a win streak, you know, so, I don't know, very good for Spike. My thoughts on Triple G and Vinus Martirosian leading up to the fight. That, I mean, that I thought Vinus coming off, I mean, he had, he had not fought in two years. Going up in weight to middleweight, 160 pounds. I mean, and fighting the, one of the most, one of the best middleweight fighters on the planet if not the best in Triple G. Triple G uh, proved that with the second round stoppage and um, and that was it. I mean and and, and Van is even you know quote Van is saying he said uh, something well he said something along the lines of that Triple G hits like like uh, like his shots feel like a like a train hitting you every time. Something along those lines. So, uh, so Triple G, yes, he's getting older, um, but you know he proved he can still he can still uh, knock guys out of there. I mean he's he's one of the hardest hitting uh, fighters in, you know, in in the game right now. I mean it's Triple G. So, but props to Tom Loeffler. And uh, all the promotional companies involved for securing the the single de Mayo date on Saturday and giving a making a, a, a fight card for the fans after the Canelo Triple G two rematch fell through due to what we already know and. Um, yeah, to, uh, props for them. I mean, yeah, Vanis took. At the end of the day, and I always say this too, you got to feed your family. So Vanis took took that shot. I mean, it was a. Some have called it like the gold, an opportunity. You know, it's a golden ticket. You know, if Triple G is off his game, or maybe he's you know missing a step. He was getting older. A lot of factors, but I mean, he could have won his belts. He would have been the man at 160, but that would have made put some uh, that would have put blood in the water. I don't know. 
that is, um, you know, I mean, uh, Tom Loeffler and company, they, they were dealing with, uh, HBO pay-per-view going to, uh, just regular HBO, HBO, HBO taking, um, reducing the money that was invested significantly and still made a, made a fight for the, for the fans. So big, big props to them. Tom Loeffler ended up tweeting yesterday, I believe, um, that the Cinco de Mayo card, uh, you know, jumped up huge ratings. It was the highest rated premium cable show since 2016 and, uh, and shattered StubHub Center ticket sales record heat set versus Rubio and merchandise record for boxing. And this is straight from his Twitter. So, I mean, that says a lot, especially for the people who say boxing is dead. It's, it's well, it's alive, and it's not going anywhere. It's only going to be growing. Also making history in the process with the undercard of Cecilia, undisputed champion Cecilia Brekus versus Callie Race in the first televised female boxing match in HBO's history, so uh, that that one that earned huge ratings as well. Um, I believe it was it beat a lot of the male uh, boxing main cards um, either this year or in previous years. It was it was uh, it was that was huge, and I've mentioned before as well. Women's boxing is on the rise. It's gaining popularity and steam. It's gaining steam. In the U.S., it's always been pretty big internationally, but in the U.S., it's definitely uh, a force to be reckoned with in the near future, and it's th- this just proves that. This weekend, May 12th, we have one of the best fights that can be made in boxing in Jorge Linares versus Vasil Lomachenko. That is going to be a great fight. I mean, I mean we said that between uh, Vasil Lomachenko and Guillermo Rigondo, but um, I mean, we we found out what that ended up being. Uh, Rigondo uh, quitting, saying his hand hurt, and um, you know they threw in the towel, and that was that was that. After that, no one can find Rigondo anywhere, so. If you find him, please let him know. Uh, some people are, you know, want to know where he's at. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this matchup will be. It, it'll be interesting. It's gonna. It's. Um, I mean, Lomachenko's footwork is phenomenal. Everyone knows that it's uh, an extensive amateur career. I mean, he's only getting better, it seems, every every fight that he's in. Um, I mean, his dodging and footwork abilities is... I mean, he's absolutely something I've never seen before. And, I don't know, stylistically, it's, it's really good. Uh the way he fights, I, I like it a lot. Uh, Jorge Linares, I believe, will be pretty effective. Uh, he'll find the holes and he'll uh, he'll be able to counter and uh, do what he needs to do to win some rounds. And I, I definitely don't see this as a as a lopsided fight. But I mean, we'll have to wait and see how uh, how that plays out on Saturday also on Saturday on I believe HBO will be Saddam Ali versus Jaime Munguia I have not seen Jaime Munguia fight yet but he's a uh, an emerging uh, boxing prospect from from Mexico I believe he's a 24-0 uh, you guys